Hi, I'm Pete Scargo. On my blog, I refer quite a lot to something called MQTT, and I'm aware that I just blithely ran on about it um, on the assumption that everybody knows what MQTT is. You'll see references to MQTT brokers and MQTT clients. Let me have a go quickly at explaining this to you. So think of an MQTT broker. MQTT is just a protocol. Think of an MQTT broker as a server or, a, or, a, or a, a package running on a server. And when I say a server, it could be a Raspberry Pi. It could even, in a very limited uh, case, uh, be an ESP8266. But generally speaking, it might be on a Raspberry Pi, it might be on a PC, or it might be a public MQTT broker. So get used to the term broker, think of it as a server. So what it is, it's a messaging system. If you're going to have home control and you're going to have uh, some devices and they have to talk to each other and they have to talk to a, a controller so that you can turn them on and off and get responses from them, there are a number of different ways you can do that. But none of them really is simpler or, in my view, better than MQTT because it's a simple protocol and it just works. MQTT brokers like Mosquito just work. So imagine you've got a bunch of devices around the house and they have to talk to, let's say, a Raspberry Pi. So they can talk to a particular IP address and they can send messages and you can come up with your own protocol for listening to the messages like, you know, hey, somebody just pressed the on button for the light and your, your Raspberry Pi will say, okay, uh, device number 5192168, uh, whatever, turn on or turn off. That can get quite unwieldy after a while. So it's better if you can just send messages around the system and not worry about IP addresses and things like that. And that's exactly what MQTT will do for you. It's, it's all over the place. You'll see MQTT all over the place. And there are test brokers that you can use for free and test clients that you can use for free. And I'm going to show you an example of both a public broker that you can play with with a web browser for free right now. Um, and also, I'll show you uh, the same thing running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, as far as the implementation on the Raspberry Pi, you don't even have to think about it because I have a thing called the script which sets a Raspberry Pi up with various packages. One of them is NQTT. When you run the script, you put a username and password in, and that becomes a username and password for the MQTT broker. So it's all done. You don't have to worry about it. But let's look, first of all, for a quick demo at something called the Hive MQTT broker and client. If we just look up Hive MQTT, we end up on their site, and there is a web page here. This is all set up for you. I haven't typed anything here. They have a public broker, which you can use for testing. And I suggest you don't do it for anything other than testing. Like, don't get the idea that you can go sending messages to this thing reliably 24 hours a day, and you'll get messages back, because you probably won't, because it's a test. Right. So do nothing more than press the Connect button. Really. That's it. You're now connected to their... MQTT broker. And what you're looking at here on your web page is a local web page client for MQTT. It doesn't need usernames or passwords, which is another reason why you wouldn't want to use it for anything serious but testing. So in MQTT, you have this concept of a topic and a payload. Think of it as um, an address and a message. So right now, this browser is able to send messages but it's not listening for any messages. So where are they going to go? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new topic subscription. And this is what this is what would happen with your ESP. It would subscribe to messages, specific messages. I'm going to add two subscriptions, and they may look a bit odd, but this is the way I've chosen to do this with my ESPs. I'm going to have a subscription to something I'm going to call 2ESP. So if my Raspberry Pi or whatever wants to send a message to all the ESPs in the house, this web browser is now listening for messages to ESP. I'm going to add another subscription, and we're going to call that Kitchen 2ESP. 
So now the device on the right hand side here, which is our little controller in the kitchen, listens to messages for 2ESP, topic 2ESP, and also kitchen 2ESP. So if I want to send um, a message to all of the devices in the house, and the message is, hello, it could be turn yourselves off, reboot, could be a, a number of different things, but hello. You'll see, you see the purple there, the subscription to ESP? You'll see that this device has now responded to, to the topic to ESP. Now, if I just change that slightly, you'll see that absolutely nothing happened. Because this device is not listening to that rubbish that you see in the topic. It is only listening to, to ESP. And there you see the message coming in. This device is also listening to messages specifically for it. Now, I, I just devised this protocol. There are a number of different ways you can do this. Looking under incoming messages, this device has now accepted a message. Hi you. The other devices don't see that because they're not looking for kitchen to ESP. They might be looking to bathroom light to ESP or whatever. So I can send messages to any device on the network or a specific device on the network. And it really is that simple. What you do with a message is set up to you. So in the case of my ESP devices, I've devised a simple protocol very near to JSON. It was pretty arbitrary, but what I've done is I've said, all right, ignore messages whose, whose payload, uh, the message here, doesn't have curly braces around them. And then typically the message will be in two parts, left-hand side, cool on right-hand side. So let's say I've got a device sitting in the kitchen which controls the kitchen light. Turn the light on. I've now sent a message to that one device sitting in the kitchen, and the message is light colon one. So the ESP device in this case gets the message, looks at the actual payload and says, all right, it's got curly braces, it's a valid message. Um, split what's inside the curly braces into two halves, left and right of the colon. Ah, oh, it's the light he wants to turn on. Right, and what's the value? One. All right, I'll turn the light on. Now what we want to do is we want to look at the actual controller, which in my case is a, a Raspberry Pi. As well as handling the MQTT broker side of things, the Raspberry Pi is also a client. And that Raspberry Pi is listening to messages. Anything. That's what that hash is for. It's like a star you would normally use for, for anything. Anything from ESP. So the kitchen light, I've turned, I've told the kitchen light to turn on. I'd like some feedback. This isn't the old days of um, the old over the mains controllers where you would send a light an instruction to turn the light on and you didn't have a clue whether it had done anything or not. So what's going to happen here is the device is going to send a message from ESP. Again, this is only a protocol I came up with. It's going to give its own name. Well, it's kitchen. And it's going to send a message out. Let's say, okay. So if you look at this dark purple, I think it's dark purple here. This is the Raspberry Pi controlling the house. It sees a message from ESP, the kitchen, which says, OK. So simply, I've sent a message to the kitchen later, like turn it on. That device, that ESP device, has sent a message back. So if I analyze the topic, I can see who it came from. Ah, uh, kitchen. Yeah, it sent a message. OK, I've turned the light on. So now you know that you've turned something on and that you've actually got confirmation, right? That's something you can play with 
without without any hardware or software. You just need a browser. You can do exactly what I've done here and have a play. Your heart's content. You're not going to do any harm um, because it's a test server, right? Now I want to show you something different, but you'll see that really is not different. I've installed on Chrome something called MQTT Box, which is again a local uh, little test software. We run that. There you go. So now this is this is empty. So up to now we've looked at a public broker, MQTT broker. I'm now going to show you uh, a real system in operation uh, in this house here in fact I'm going to create a client I'm going to use this is how I talk to my controllers using MQTT on port 1883 I believe uh, but that's a, it's a standard port that's, that's used for this the host is 192.168 19 that's my Raspberry Pi in this case I talk to it with a username and password I wouldn't recommend using an MQTT broker that doesn't handle username and passwords for anything other than playing around and that's it you can see I'm connected I was that simple so we're in a similar situation to where we were before we can we can send messages and we can receive messages so once again I'm going to have a see well let me first of all show you if I just put the wildcard character in I can show you all the messages that are currently going through my system here right now and as you can see there are lots of them uh, this is really going too quick for you to see but if you have a look at the topic there there are various devices, a FOIA to ESP, um, other Pi to ESP. There are messages going back and from ESP. There are messages going back and forward all the time. Right. But a given ESP doesn't want all that rubbish. So we're going to subscribe to messages to ESP. We're also going to listen to, uh, we'll call this test X so now what we have here in yellow is a pretend device it listens to two uh, messages to two SP so my Raspberry Pi or whatever can send out generic messages for all of the boards on the system and most of the time all it sends out every now and then is a message which as you can see the payload is heartbeat one and all that's saying is, hey, the server or broker is here and working. Um, everything's okay. You're, you're connected. Uh, everything's fine. My ESPs look for that message every now and then. They run a little countdown timer. And if they don't get that message um, regularly, they say, oh, something wrong here. I'm going to reboot. I'm just... Uh, nobody's talking to me. The system's not working. So you can see once a minute, there's a message sent to all the ESPs, right? But let's say I want to send to this particular one. We've called it Tech Test X. And I'm going to send a message. Let's see. Turn GPIO 12 on. If this was a real piece of hardware, this would be about to turn an output on. Nothing significant about GPIO 12. Um, I'm not referring to the real GPIO 12. It's just the protocol that I've agreed for myself. So inside the ESP, when I get a message, I'll say, okay, that's a valid message. That's got curly braces around it. What's the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the message inside there? So, so I just pass that um, and, and I see, oh, GPIO 12. Right, okay, I want to actually turn that GPIO 12 on and off. It could be GPIO 13 or 14 or whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. I could do anything I want. I'm just reading that message and saying, right, what is what is the right-hand side of that? Oh, it's a 1. So if um, someone 
could be another ESP12, it could be Node Red on the Raspberry Pi, uh, but anyone hooked into the system can send that message. And lo and behold, on the right hand side here, I've just received that message, GPIO 12.1, and I can turn the light on. Now, the ESP itself, I have a protocol for sending replies, and where we're sending a message to the device, to ESP, um, the reply, I say, okay, I'm going to send you a reply. Now, if we add a subscriber at the bottom here, the Raspberry Pi listens to from ESP anything. And I'm going to say from ESP test eggs. Okay. So here, what's happening is this device, which has just had a message to turn a, a light on, say, is going to send a message back and say, OK. Now, if you look carefully at the bottom from ESP, if you look at the topic, the topic is from ESP, test X, and the response is OK. So the Raspberry Pi or whatever, can have a look at that topic and oh it's from ESP it's a response from one of the devices which one well on the right hand side of that slash tells you which one uh, test X has in fact responded to my command and it's turned the light on okay so the Raspberry Pi my script installs MQTT for you you don't have to worry about that the software on the ESPs handles these subscriptions all you have to do is hook the two together on the network and start sending control messages and listen for them and respond accordingly. And in my case, I do that in Node Red. And you'll see all of this explained on the blog. I hope that gives you an idea of how you might use MQTT. It really isn't any more complicated than it looks. Really, that's it. You can go on to that Hive site and have a play. And then when you're feeling a bit more confident, you can load up a Raspberry Pi or an Orange Pi or whatever with an MQTT broker and start playing locally. And then when you understand that, you can use that to turn things on and off. Now I'm referring to ESPs, uh, ESP8266 devices. It's, it's totally irrelevant what the device is. It could be an Arduino connected to the internet listening to, subscribing to those two um, topics, to ESP and whatever the name of the device is, to ESP. Um, and they all work together. It, it's irrelevant what the actual hardware is as long as it's able to handle the MQTT protocol. And most IoT devices uh, that you can program up yourself there will be a way of getting them to listen to MQTT. So I hope you found that useful.